today's video, I'm gonna show you guys a super quick, simple, and easy way to add a little bit of contrast to your Milky Way in a hurry and to really get yourself started off on the right foot. This is a tool that I use on every single one of my Milky Way photos at the very start, and it's a tool that I wanna show you guys how to use. It's a lot simpler and easier than you'd think, and we're gonna do that in Photoshop. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right in there with this super short and sweet tutorial video on how to get the Milky Way really looking good right off the bat. So I've got my image open in Photoshop here, and the reason why I like doing this in Photoshop is because it's a little bit easier to be more selective to just select the sky. Um, and the tool that I'm gonna use, they do have it available in Lightroom, but if you try it, you'll notice that you won't get the same effects because you can't make a really good selection of the sky. So anyways, let's go ahead and show you that tool. And that tool is a curves adjustment. So you can find it down here, right where it says curves. But I actually wanna make a quick selection of the sky here because you'll see if I grab a curves layer right now and I just make the S curve adjustment that I wanna to make to the sky, you'll see that it's not exactly doing what I want because we're darkening the foreground way too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. We're gonna make a selection of the sky. Now, most of you guys are probably gonna have an easy time making a selection of the sky, especially if you're out shooting rocks like this where there's nothing difficult to mask out in the foreground. If you do have some trees in the sky, you do need to know a few advanced masking techniques that I'm not gonna cover in this video, but I may cover it in a video later down the road. Um, but in order to select the sky over the foreground, if you already know how to do this, you can do it whatever way you want. But if you don't know how to do this, you're going to go up and grab the quick selection tool or just press W. Now I've customized my toolbar here, so it's likely that your quick selection tool is not gonna be right here. So just press W and hopefully it'll come up. Now you can just click and drag around here and you can see that it's just gonna snap very quickly to the sky. Now, if I was doing this for real and not just for a simple tutorial video for YouTube here, I'd probably spend some more time refining this mask and going in and using the plus and the minus options here to make a little bit better mask. But for the sake of this video, this looks perfectly fine to me. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create a curves layer with that selected. And when that's selected, you can see that it applies as a layer mask here. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to make adjustments. Now remember that whatever we do to this is only going to affect the sky and not the foreground. So what I wanna do is create an S curve, but when I create that S curve, I wanna make sure that I'm doing it to where the curve of the S is where all the pixels lie in the image. So some people would make an S curve like this, but you can see that that's not really doing anything because the curve of the S is above all the pixels. So we wanna make sure that we go below the graph and the pixels in the image, and then we go above the graph and the pixels of the image. And now I can just go in and adjust this as I see fit. And that's looking pretty good to me. So you can see just that really simple adjustment really helps to pop the Milky Way. It's a really good thing to do to kind of prime your image to work with, um, with other adjustments. I might do one more curves layer here. I'm gonna create a curves layer. And now if I wanted to apply this layer mask to this curves layer as well, I would simply just have to hit the trash can down here to get rid of that layer mask. Then I'm gonna hold command and click on this layer mask. On a PC, that would be hold control and click on the layer mask. You can see it's now grabbed that as a selection. Then I'm gonna hit the layer mask button and it's gonna apply here. So that'll give me the option to do a little bit more. And another way that you can adjust this that I really like doing is by using this finger tool up here and coming down. And this is gonna allow me to adjust it by clicking on the image. So if you look at the graph over here, as I hover over the image, you can see that it's basically telling me exactly where the pixels that I'm hovering over lie on this graph. So I wanna adjust these darks a little bit more maybe, and probably right there, and let's just drag that down. And I want to bring up these highlights just a little bit more, so let's drag that up. And you can see we've added quite a bit of contrast here. So just using that really simple curves adjustment makes that super easy. And that's gonna give you a lot better results when you do this technique called cross-processing where you're processing for the sky and then later we'll process for the foreground. It's gonna give you so much better results by doing it that way. Because if you went into Lightroom and you just went up on the contrast slider, you're not gonna get quite the contrast that we were able to get here because it's also gonna be balancing it with the really dark foreground and the scene doesn't have a lot of contrast to begin with. So by doing it a little more selectively, we've added a ton of contrast and made this image already look so much better. This obviously isn't the end of my Milky Way editing journey, um, but this is like the first step that I always prefer to take and I highly recommend that you guys give this a go with 
a curves adjustment in Photoshop. And again, uh, you do need to do it in Photoshop so that it's a lot easier to make a selection of the sky. If you just use the curve in Lightroom, it's just simply not going to work as well. So I highly recommend putting this in Photoshop, pausing and playing the video and doing it right alongside me as I do it. Alrighty guys, I really hope that video was helpful. As always, I recommend just pausing and playing it and doing it on your own as you watch the video. I wanna thank you guys so much for checking out this weekend's video. Uh, as always, I really appreciate you guys' support, your comments, uh, your likes and subscribes, it all means a lot to me. So thank you so much, everybody. And uh, I really look forward to bringing you guys another video next weekend. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you then, bye-bye.